Hello, viewers. Welcome back. And welcome to the boardroom for the first time, old friend Craig Durr. Craig, could you please introduce yourself for our viewers? Well, hello, hello everyone. My name is Craig Durr. Um, like David, I work as an industry analyst within the workplace collaboration and communication space. Um, I look forward to talking to you. Thanks for having me. We go back a long way. We're actually alumni of Wayne House Research back in the day. That's true. So I've been working in this field for about five years. Uh, four of those was with Wayne House. The last year was with the Futurum Group. But um, as I'm excited to share with you, I have a, a new venture on the horizon. And um, it's something I think that you and I uh, would, would share a lot of similarities in and what we're doing. Yeah, actually, that's the big reason I'm having you here. I thought I'd do you a big favor, save you the trouble. I'm imagining your DMs <laughs> in LinkedIn are probably lit up. I'm getting seeing you have red lights flashing, a thousand people saying, Craig, you got to tell me what are you up to? This is so cool. So, Craig, tell us what you're up to. This is so cool. <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity to share. Well, if you look above my head, you're going to see a new logo. Um, I'm excited, David, to share with you and your audience that um, as of June 1st is kind of the coming out time frame, I'm going to be launching a new analyst firm under the name of the Collab Collective. Now, it's a really unique name, but um, it is taking uh, into account what I've known and I've done here over the last uh, 15, 20 years. I've worked in the collaboration space, uh, having worked eight, nine years as, as a product uh, manager with Poly and Polycom. Before that, I worked with Dell, managing uh, UC solutions for them. And before that, I worked with Microsoft. Um, so I'm staying near and dear to the technology and the solutions and the devices that I like, talking about workplace collaboration and communication. But the, but the really interesting way I'm going to be looking at this also, which is um, I'm also going to be expanding slightly, and I'm going to be talking about customer experience and employee experience. Um, in those spaces, you and I know there's a lot of underlying technology. We go to these events, we see people like WebEx tell us about the underlying technologies or Zoom doing contact center and unified communications with the same technology. And it's true. You know, a lot of the uh, underlying technologies are the same, but the use cases get to become so interesting and so unique depending on customer use cases or employee use cases and the motivations behind them. You know, um, time to resolution, uh, employee satisfaction, that those get some sort of rich area to explore and research and understand and drive some insights around. So workplace collaboration inclusive of customer experiences and employee experiences under the new name, the Collab Collective. Oh, that, that's perfect. Yeah, I, I, you know, let's do video. People kind of assume, oh, okay, so it's just video. But no, like like you, I've sort of evolved and expanded, but no, I'm, kind of, I'm not stuck with the name. I love the name. But I, I really have to agree with you, particularly on the customer experience side. When um, yeah. when I first heard that, when I first realized a few years ago that uh, all these trade shows that we attend, there's a lot of CX companies here. Am I going to have to yeah. start covering them? I don't like customer service agents when I call them. They're mean <laughs> to me and I have bad experience with Verizon. And, and is this my life now? And I thought about it for 10 seconds and I came to the same conclusion you did. It's like, wait a minute. If Zoom or Cisco or Microsoft or whoever is good at moving data and voice and video through the internet right. to the right people at the right time, that's the same stuff. It's all the same software. It's all the same technology. And right. But what, what turned me, I'm like, so I was reluctantly covering it, but what turned yeah. it around for me is AI. AI and customer yeah. service, I'm excited about it. It's cool. It's not just amazing in demos at Cisco Live and all that kind of stuff. It's mm -hmm. really going to make, you know, I feel bad for the agents because I was just mean to them. A minute ago, I said mean things. People are mean to the agents. It's going to help their lives. It's really, it's really good so stuff. I, you know, what AI, this is one of the, what I'm really excited about is if I think about, I'm, I'm going to keep it broad and call customer experience, but contact center is a core technology there. But um, it is the area of communications that has the best use cases immediately for AI. Yeah. And I think of it this, one of the great things AI can do is this, is it can help detect things over voice. Sentiment, for example, is David upset? Is he happy? Um, I can pull information then from, see, is David's transactions over the last two, three years with us been joyful? Have they been kind of troublesome? Um, and bringing sentiment to that person who's trying to help them and understand what's going on, I think is a very powerful thing. Now, granted, in the other world I talk about, which is unified communications, sentiment, some people think that's a little bit, it could get creepy if I start trying to understand right now, is David paying attention to me on this video call or not? Is he falling asleep? Is his eyes doing that? But again, 
it creates this really rich area to help take this great new technology and apply some really practical uh, applications. And that's what's exciting about it, I think. Yep, and, and I saw that on both sides of the equation. We always forget there's that there's, or I always forget that there's a human being on both sides of the phone call. And I saw a demo. I think it was Cisco. Cisco's contact center stuff. The AI is, is really, you know, at least as far as the demos. But I believe them. I'm 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 not a skeptic. But the. They showed it on the customer side. They did a transaction and, okay, we're going to refund you and get you a ticket for the next day. Right. Are you okay? And the customer was like, yeah, I guess that's fine. Thanks, I guess, for helping me. And the AI said, they're not really, they're saying they're okay, but they're not really happy. And the editor said, hey, you know, we want to make you happy. Can we give you a free t-shirt as well? And then the, the person perfect. was like, oh, wow, that's so happy. Okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'll go tomorrow with my t-shirt. But then they showed it on the other side where the AI was checking the agent's tone and was saying to the agent, right. You know, dude, you're stressed out. You've taken too many calls. Take a break. Look at some puppies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember the Ariana Huff uh, solution was integrated yeah. into the WebEx solution? And that was, I forget the name of it, but um, it did take, allow you to take breaks and have moments of, of um, kind of reestablishing your own personal energy, which is nice. But here's another thing also. I, I'm going to go to the next one, which is employee experience. Um, this is really, really interesting ground for me because you know what this is? Employee experience is one of the leading um, inputs into company culture. And I, I um, you actually at, were, happened to be at, a, at an event where I was fortunate enough to speak at the Crestron Modern Work Summit, and I yeah. shared some insights into what I thought about what culture means. To me, culture is group behavior. I mean, you can have a CEO that stands on stage and says, we have company culture and we have values that are on the wall, but um, it doesn't really hit the road until you have a group of people that act that way. Does Everyone in the biz, in the company show up 10 minutes early for a meeting, or is it just that one CEO? Does everyone stop and say hello, wish happy birthday, um, you know, get their homework in on time, or is it just one or two persons that do that? So company culture, I think, is super interesting as a topic and important right now as we start trying to drive this new way of work post-pandemic. Um, so employee experience, again, is another area and AI could really help there as well, too. I mean, you have things that can help drive and measure what does that group sentiment feel like? And um, I, I, that's, I think, going to be a really exciting area. And what what is a great example of a client of ours that you and I both work with is Zoom. In the last year and a half, they they um, they uh, acquired WorkVivo. Mm -hmm. And they are making it more and more front and center within their Zoom workplaces experience. Um and I think between now and at Infocom, we're going to hear a bunch about that as well. And we're going to probably hear some more as they get ready for their next big event, which is Zoomtopia again in October. Yeah. And that's cool that we get to talk about that because, you know, work culture has always been a cool thing. Every company has their inside jokes or things they do, the things they do on Thursdays. Yeah. And that's fun stuff to talk about. But why do us old, you know, UC guys get to talk about it? Because the office is now virtual in the new yeah. hybrid world. It, it's now software tools from the companies that we cover that are enabling that, uh, like Zoom Huddle. Uh, I haven't heard enough noise about that. I have faith in it. I think it's a cool idea, but that's the kind <laughs> of thing that is going to, maybe they should call it a Zoom water cooler because it is replacing, it's giving a space, a virtual space for that water cooler, those inside jokes, those moments that we're not gonna be able to have in person. So lucky for us, that became virtualized now a part of, a, part of our little world. I think so. You know, I, it, it plays into, I have a larger framework that I like to think about when I talk to people. I call it the three W's. It talks about the workplace, the workforce, and the workflows. Um, and you can see how all these ideas start playing into that right now. Culture is, is one of those threads that can kind of work through all of them. Your workplace helps define a culture. People think, people used to think the office was the culture. I have a cool office. I've got snacks in a kitchen. I've got free coffee. Those are great things, and they help maybe support a culture of, hey, let's get together and talk over a cup of coffee, or let's get together and have time in the office because it's a great place to hang out that's that's warm and inviting. But that isn't culture. It 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 is an enablement of it. It is a, a tool to help create it as well, too. Same thing for workflows. So it goes back to what you're saying. The way we leverage these technologies as a group help define culture. You know, do I, um, again, do I use instant message instead of just hitting you up on a, on a call all the time. It's little small things, you know, just what, oh, yeah. what's the behavior that we do as a company. And um, so it's really exciting time right now. People are really focused on what I think they are calling return to the office. It's not a new phrase. I think 
my 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 pitch here over the, the last six months going forward and going forward for six months is it's not don't focus on return to the office focus on return to in person and what you need to figure out is the when and the where you want you want to to, to meet when, when do you have to meet in person and where do you want to meet the office is a natural place that to take place it is a it is a company asset it is shared space um but you may also find yourself meeting offline at a co-working location as well too you and i might meet a, at a starbucks do something like that and then when again or it's in next person week. in an office yeah yeah exactly exactly <laughs> and you know when might be this you know that's when people try to set their schedules up and everyone shows up on monday or wednesday well maybe not maybe we just say hey all the analysts show up on wednesdays it's analyst wednesday and that's when we're all going to go in the office and that is the opportunity for us to uh, meet as a group of like-minded people so that, that is th again these are things that get me excited about about the discussions that you and I have with with both people who are providing the technologies and the people who are eager for those solutions. Yeah, I, and that gets me excited too. It's funny the way we think we're, we have a lot of parallel kind of things. Your presentations have similar themes. We use different words, but it, I was thinking the same or a similar thing along the lines of what defines an office. And I have my yeah. my three things, which are similar to your three things. I have my my people, my tools, and my data. And back in the yeah, old days yeah. when I worked in a physical office, I thought the office was the workplace because that had my tools. I had a laptop, but that thing, I mean, I'm talking in the 90s. It couldn't, I couldn't work at home on that. <laughs> I, had, I needed my, 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 my real laptop at the office, my computer at the office. Yeah. My people were there. They weren't on an instant message with me. We didn't have that back then. And my data, I had physical files. And that's yeah. all become virtualized. That's, so my office, my workplace, it's, it's Zoom, it's Teams. That those are my those are my that's that's where my stuff is that's where my workplace is, I may choose I to go to a physical building to meet with my colleagues to do some work, but that's not really my workplace anymore. It's it's a collab space. Yeah, it's a collab Great. collective. I love it. I, I, I love <laughs> I love that analogy too. I love that too. Yeah, hey, it's actually I I appreciate you 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 mentioning that again. Um, we didn't delve into that too much, but the name was very intentional. Um. I wanted to have something that spoke not to the industry or the technology that you and I talk about, but the process that we bring things together for both the uh, the technology clients and the end users. I mean, I, I think of my goal, and you and I were talking in the green room beforehand, that I think what I want to do for those clients, those technology vendors, I want to help them drive better decisions, and I want to help them reach more people. And on the other side of the equation is I want to drive clarity of information and ease of understanding for the people that need to understand what's taking place in our space or the problems. What does it mean to have culture? What does it mean to have Zoom versus WebEx versus Teams? Those are the clarities we want to drive. And to get there, I think the process needs to be collaborative. I think gone are the days of um, analysts in their ivory towers looking down and saying, this is how it shall be. Well, yeah, that might've worked before. But a lot of our clients have access to as much research and data as we have. Um, and they, they have a treasure trove. But I just they got an email from have... Cisco. They got a new report yeah. on, on hybrids, and it had some, some good yeah. stats in there. Yeah, exactly. But I think having them help them understand and bridge what that information means to the world, to the market, is, is the value of play. It's a collaborative process. Yeah, um, I, I love I think... the fact that we're not just coming out with great products and saying, you know, look at this telepresence system. It's amazing. World, you should buy it. But we're looking right. at the world and saying, this is the way the world looks to work. We need to design around it. Uh, that's, yeah. that's the way it always should have been. That's, that's, what, that's what we always said we were doing, but we weren't. Uh, but now I yeah, think it's it was, really happening. It was, it was the, uh, we used to have solutions looking for a problem, right? Yeah. You know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> We, you know, the, the technology, I, I was as much part of that on when I was working, leading a product team at Polycom, you know, you'd, you'd have these great ideas. Our engineers were brilliant and they would bring forward like, we can do this now. Can you help find a use case where someone might want to try and do that? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's know, hard. It, it was, it was hard. It was, it was a give and take back and forth. I love, I love my engineers. I love engineers. Don't, don't, but let's, you know, don't, don't take away any other message there. So. <laughs> No, but the right way is to design to, to solve the problem. We have a lot of problems to solve. I mean, we have uh, a lot of people who they say, when I'm home, I'm on Zoom or Teams, and I'm fully framed like a, um, a newscaster. And then um, I go to the office, and we get in our Teams meeting, I, and we look like this. And no one's right, listening exactly. to us, and we don't look serious. And, and I mean, and this I is it's, it's a fun little gimmick that I do um, 
I like to press that button and make that happen, but it really is a problem. And I think you're actually talking to that in into Infocom. Should we switch over to start talking about? That is a great segue.